Hello and welcome to Tommy Talks TV. I have one singular goal with this show and that is to help you make smarter decisions so that you can have better relationships. I'd like to start by saying a massive, massive thank you. Thank you for all your likes and your shares and your comments on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. I really, really appreciate you because you're helping us spread the message further faster. So thank you very much indeed. And I really want to encourage you if you're watching on my YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to subscribe and Click the notifications button so that you don't ever miss anything else that I share. And I want to also say that, you know, if the things that I'm sharing are being a blessing to you, then please share them with other people so that they can be encouraged as well. Now, today I want to share with you part two of something that I started talking about last week. So last week I started talking about 15 questions to ask before you get married to someone. And I want to, you know, share the second part of that. Uh, last week I shared five questions. Today I'm going to be sharing five questions and next week I'll be sharing another five questions to ask. Now, I started by saying last week that, the, 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 you know, the question of who you get married to is such a fundamental question because the decision of who you get married to next to the decision of, you know, receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that is the next biggest decision that you will make in your life that will affect the course and the quality of your life. It will affect the kind of life that you will enjoy, the kind of future that you will experience. So it's really important that you're asking the right questions when you want to get married to someone. Now, these questions that you're asking, are, are, they're relevant not just to the person you want to get married to, but to you as well. Um, so as you're examining the person you want to get married to, you need to be examining yourself as well and making sure that, you know, you line up you know, with some of these things that we're sharing. So it's, it's important that you're asking the right questions. And I believe that when you ask the right questions, you will get the right answers. So the sixth thing that you need to ask yourself is this. Are we committed to each other? Are we committed to each other? And that's a very fundamental question to ask because if you're currently in a relationship, there is always bound to be someone prettier, someone more handsome, someone smarter, someone you know funnier, wealthier, whatever uh, you can think about uh, than the person you're currently with. So the question is this, you know, are you both committed to this relationship and committed to taking it into marriage? Because, you know, it's really difficult to build a great uh, marriage if your eyes are basically, you know, looking elsewhere to see if there's a better prospect somewhere. So once you're ready to take that step to get married to someone, what you're saying is that, well, you know, I believe that this is the person, uh, you know, that I should be building my future with and I am committed to this relationship. And you both need to match each other with your commitment because it doesn't really work when one person is committed, but then the other person is dragging their feet about, you know, getting married. I've seen that, you know, sometimes where, you know, people are basically trying to persuade or cajole someone to get married but the thing is this you know marriage is not going to make a person committed to you they either are or they are not there is no magic in the words i do to suddenly make that person uh, you know committed to you so you know some people may think well if i just get them to get married to me then all will be well no um they've got to have that heart of commitment and that desire to spend their life and their future with you and it will take that kind of commitment to build the kind of marriage that you you know you desire to have but to build a marriage that you can both enjoy marriage takes commitment so are you prepared to say yes to this person and close your eyes to every other potential prospect you know and really feel that this is the best thing that i believe you know that god you know wanted me to have and and give your best to that marriage uh you know i always say that it's unjust to monopolize somebody's time and you know their attention if you're not really committed to get getting married to them um so you've really got to be thinking about that whole question of commitment are you both committed to making this work as a marriage you're not just playing games but you're you're both really committed uh, you know to, to making it work as marriage now the second thing oh well which is now the seventh thing in my list um, is kind of closely allied to the one that I just shared. And this has to do with, you know, you both being excited about the relationship. Are you excited about the relationship? And are you excited about each other? You know, there's got to be a thrill when you're planning to get married to someone. There has to be some kind of a excitement because, you know, a good relationship is something to shout about. Uh, you know, I remember when, uh, you know, I was courting with my husband, uh, we courted for seven years, story for another day, if you haven't heard that story before. Um, but, you know, several of those years we were apart because I was still in uni completing my, my course um, in architecture and he was working, he was working in, in banking. And, you know, the, the thing about it was, I remember the first time I ever went to visit in the city where 
um, he was working. And, you know, I, I got to his office and everyone was like, oh, wow, we've heard so much about you. you know, and I got to, to his desk and there was a picture of me on his desk that told me that, you know, he was excited about the relationship. A good relationship is something to shout about. So if you're in a relationship with someone who you feel, you know, you, you've got to hide the relationship or the person is not excited about the relationship. They don't really want to share it with other people. They don't want to talk about it. Uh, then that can be a challenge. So are you both excited about the relationship? Are you both excited about the prospect of being married? Um, I have counseled some people who, you know, they're thinking about getting married to someone and they're like, well, you know, he's a good person or she's a good person, but, you know, there's not really that kind of like excitement. They don't really see that marriage as a gift from God. You know, you should be proud of the person that you're getting married to and you should see that marriage as a gift from God. So, you know, if you don't, then that could be a potential challenge in the marriage and it's something that you've got to watch out for because marriage is something that's supposed to be enjoyed. It's not supposed to be endured. So you should be absolutely excited about the person you're planning to get married to when you do get married you know there'll be all sorts of you know you know day-to-day -day things that you've got to be thinking about in marriage and then you've got to be able to maintain that excitement in marriage but you have to start off with that excitement in the first place about being married to this person so that's really crucial the next one um, has to do with physical attraction are we physically attracted to each other now this is my number eight and it can be a very tricky one when you're a Christian in, in a relationship because, you know, when you're in a Christian in a, in a relationship, you know full well that, you know, God's desire for you is that you keep the gift of sex for when you get married. So sex is supposed to be in the right context and that context is after you are married. But at the same time, um, there has to be some kind of spark of physical attraction between the two of you before you get married. And when you're in your courtship, you've got to learn how to manage that. But you see, it can be a challenge if you're in a relationship with someone, but there really is no physical attraction at all. And I've had, you know, a lot of people ask me questions about well, you know, this person is nice, you know, they're a good believer. I think they would make a good spouse, but then there's no attraction. I don't, you know, I don't feel excited about the thought of, you know, being, you know, in a sexual relationship with them after we get married. That could be a potential issue in marriage because a good sex life is fundamental to, you know, to, to a good marriage. So if you're with someone who uh, you can't imagine them you know, touching you, you can't imagine yourself being, you know, sexually involved with them after you get married, you've got to think very, very carefully because it's going to be unfair on that person if you're not geared up to build a good sexual relationship after you get married. So you've got to think about it. You know, people might think, oh, well, you know, if they're spiritual, then that's all that works. <laughs> but, you know, this is also a very, very crucial you know, aspect of marriage because I've seen marriages enter into very challenging circumstances because of just this one thing um you know i, I don't I, I would not put it ahead of all the other things that i've spoken about but it's also very fundamental so there has to be that spark and that sexual attraction between you and the person that you want to get married to and if there isn't you've got to think very carefully about whether this is actually the right person for you or not um number nine is this can i be happy with you if you never change <laughs> Uh, this one is a, is, a, is a really interesting one, but I think it's such an important thing because there is no end to the number of people who get married to people whom they are planning to change. Um, it is a huge mistake for you to get married to someone who you see as a makeover project. You know, someone who you feel, well, you know, once I get married to them, I will change them like this, adjust them like that, make them like this. Well, they're not quite this now, but they will be this after you get married. Marriage is not going to transform that person into the picture of who you want them to be. People grow and they evolve, but then also you've got to be, you know, conscious of the fact that human beings are notoriously resistant to change that is imposed from the outside. We change when we want to change. We don't change because people are trying to force us to change or trying to make us change. So if there are things that you've seen in this person that you feel these are things I can't deal with after I get married, but I'm just hoping or I'm trusting or I'm praying that the person will change after we get married, you've got to think again. You've got to think again. Um, you know, the baseline of a successful marriage is contentment. The fact that, you know, as the person is, you are content with them. Yes, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. And after you get married, there will have to be adjustments. So you would, you know, you would really hope that the person, you know, is prepared to make adjustments. But you've got to look at someone as they are and ask yourself, well, are their strengths 
the kinds of things that I will celebrate in marriage and are there weaknesses, weaknesses that I can tolerate even if they never really change. Because in, you may be looking at a weakness that the person has been trying to change for years and years or maybe it's something that they don't even feel the need to change at all. Um, you know, and that can get very, very tricky. So what I'm saying is this, you know, there's there's nothing worse than getting married to someone and then you're constantly bombarding them, you know, trying to nag them into being a different person or a different version of themselves because you feel that as they are, they are not acceptable. Are you willing to give the gift of acceptance to this person as they are? And would you be excited and happy in the marriage as they are if they never change? And, you know, you really got to be realistic because, you know, when you look at your pr prospective partner, you look at their strengths and their weaknesses, for every weakness that you see, you've got to remember that, you know, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So there's probably, you know, quite a bit more of it, uh, you know, uh, which you will see after you get married because we always like to put our best foot forward when we're in a relationship with someone. So... You've got to be thinking very carefully about, you know, the weaknesses that you see displayed and, you know, are there things that you can live with? And the same for you as well. You've got to be thinking about your, you know, your strengths that you're bringing into the relationship and where your weaknesses lie as well and where you feel that change needs to be made. So you've got to think, you know, and ask yourself, if this person never changes, am I going to be happy married to them? And number 10, my final one, um, am I ignoring any warning signals? As you can see, this is closely related to, to the one that we just shared because, you know, I realized that marriage is an unconditional commitment to an imperfect pe person. None of us is perfect. Like I said before, we all bring our strengths and our weaknesses into marriage. Um, but then there's a big difference between what you would call superficial faults and what you, would, you know, you could term as actually fundamental character flaws. Right. There are some things that are superficial, you know, faults um, you know, maybe the person is not as tidy as you think they should be. They're not as organized as you would like them to be. Um, you know, maybe they're not as outgoing as you would like them to be. You know, those are sort of like things that you can find a way, you know, to work around when you're in a relationship with someone. But then there are things that are very, very fundamental character flaws. And those are things that you need to be watching out for. Um, you know, so things like, um, you know, chronic unfaithfulness. Um, they can't even be faithful to you when you're in a courtship. Um, how, how, how are they going to be faithful to you when you get married if they, they can't be faithful in a courtship? So that's an example. Or someone who is just, you know, verbally or physically abusive. So you get into, uh, you, know, you know, a heated discussion with that person and they can be, you know, physically abusive uh, to you, want to hit you. Or, you know, verbally abusive is like completely disrespectful. You know, respect goes out of the window and, you know, they, you know, they insult you and insult your, your entire family because they're, they're upset with you. Um, you know, those are things that you should watch out for. Uh, vengefulness, people that find it difficult to forgive. So if you find out that, you know, for other people, if anyone else offends them they never forgive then that tells you that you might be in line for that kind of treatment too if you do something in marriage that might call for their forgiveness or maybe they're chronically irresponsible or maybe there there are addictions you know to alcohol to drugs you know things like that or you know maybe there's a tendency to constantly you know uh, you know be living a life of deception so they're not honest not honest with you you find that you know that it's very easy for them to be dishonest to other people think about that very carefully so these are things that are fundamental character flaws and the truth is this marriage has no power to change an individual only god can so if you see these sorts of warning signals you've got to be asking yourself you know Am I well advised going into, into this marriage? Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 3, from the voice translation, it says, Prudent people see trouble coming and hide, but the naive walk right into it and they take a beating. It is prudent for you to look at what you're seeing, look at the signals that you're seeing in that marriage and ask yourself, based on the signals that I'm seeing, what kind of marriage, what kind of life am I going to have with this person if I get married to them? And if you're seeing those signals and, you know, you're, you're already worried about the signals that you're seeing, then you've got to think very carefully about ending the relationship. That's really important. Act fast now so that you don't have regrets later. So this was my 10th one. Um, and I hope this has blessed you. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with you another five to wrap up this this series. If this series is helping you, if it's being a blessing to you, then please share it with someone else who it will encourage and who it will be a blessing to as well. Thank you very much and see you next time. God bless you and bye for now.